Today I'm going to show you how to use a satellite to track anyone you want. Okay guys, welcome back to another episode Yeah, here on Sam's Creative Toolbox. Like always, my name is Sam. And like I said in the intro, today I'm going to show you how to use a satellite to track anyone you want. So if you ever watched a spy video like Jason Bourne, Iron Man, or whatever, they always have these super cool animations where they can, from space, track anyone in a city, in a house, wherever they go. So today I'm going to show you how to do that in After Effects. I will show you how to animate a satellite or a crosshairs effect across a, yeah, a landscape, across a map, and then how to zoom in in a very, very cool way. So yeah, like always, let's be in After Effects and have some fun. Okay guys, once again, welcome back to After Effects. And yeah, as you can see, I already prepared a little scene here for you. Uh, just to save some time, I decided that I don't wanna tell you or explain you how I created those HUD and interface elements, which you can see right here. The reason is that, like I said, I wanna save some time and I also made three tutorials about that topic. So if you're interested in these kind of elements and the creation process, please check out my channel and look for HUD tutorial. It's actually three parts. So like I said, I explain there in full detail how I do that. So just a short words about this interface. If you take a closer look, like for example, let's zoom in a bit. You can see that I created numerous HUD interfaces and also this kind of frame around some of these text layers and more interfaces as well. But still you can see that I didn't fill out any uh, space here, so there's still a lot of empty space left. If you create some interfaces, I really would like you to spend some quality time on really working on full detail. Just to give an example, here's one of my older projects. I, um, yeah, I don't know, it took me about one or two weeks, I don't know, because as you can see, there are really a lot of small details. So yeah, just spend some time creating some really cool interfaces. Because as I always say, it's about the details and the more details you have, the more awesome your project will look. Okay, so now for the animation, you obviously need a lot of pictures. In my case, it's a world map. If you want to use it, for example, just for private use, you may can use Google Maps or Google Earth images. So you can really zoom in until you see your house or some famous building. But as I always say, if you don't use your own images, please read the terms of use to avoid future trouble. So like I said, I used a world map from the NASA website. I will also put a link in the description of the video. So here is my base image. As you can see, it's super high resolution, like 21 and a half thousand pixels. Of course, this image is way too big and will really slow down After Effects. So I decided, hence my final output is full HD, to use Photoshop to create four images, which are, as I said, full HD. So here it is, 1920 by 1080 pixels. So the first image which I will start with is the world map in a wide shot and then with each shot I kind of zoom in and get closer. Okay, of course after that, after you found your images, you just select them, click and drag them into After Effects and just put them in your timeline right here. As you can see, world map 1, Europe and Europe close. Like I always say, please rename your images or your layers to always stay organized. So let's say you've created your interface right here, just make it more interesting and also imported your uh, world map or your Google images, whatever. It's now time to create this kind of crosshairs element. Of course, you can really use anything you want. If you want it more complex, you can even put some numbers like coordinates and stuff around or some images. 
uh, yeah, it's really up on you. But like I said, it's really the same thing I explain in my HUD tutorial series. So let's just open that up and as you can see it's just numerous layers which um, are also animated so that it looks a bit interesting in the beginning. Okay. So this is really our, um, our base blade where now we can start animating our satellite zoom effect. Okay, so therefore I first want to select my crosshairs, go to the beginning or in my case it's about 2 seconds and 10 frames because as I said I also animated this uh, thing in to make it look more interesting. So my animation now will start at 2 and 10 frames. So then I click P for position and also S for scale. Because I will start here in the center, of course you can start anywhere you want. And then depending on how fast you want your, um, your crosshairs to move, you will either choose 1 seconds, 2 seconds, or in my case I will make it very very quick. So I will just use uh, 20 frames. So I will uh, move forward 20 frames in my timeline. And then I will think about, okay, where I will now move my crosshairs. Like, if you would look for something on the world map, maybe your um, crosshairs is moving around looking to find your, um, your agent or basically whatever you want to look for. So I will now put it maybe across, um, across Florida, for example. Okay, also one for scale. And if you want, you can now, for example, scale it a bit down, like if it's taken a closer look to this uh, specific area right here. So I will do that maybe with, um, let's say, 10 frames, so 10 frames forward again, and now scale it down to 75, for example. At this moment, you may also write some text like um, scanning Florida, scanning Miami or something like that or even location not found, target not found, yeah, really whatever you want. Just as I said, make it as complex as possible. Um, let's say I want to stay there for about one second, so I will move forward for about one second in my timeline. And then again I will select uh, or create a keyframe for the scale modifier. Okay, and then Again, 10 frames forward to scale it back to 100. And this time I also want to create a position keyframe because from there on I will start changing the position again. So yeah, after that, once again, let's think about a second um, area on your world map. So let's say I want to move it somewhere around China or India, for example. So Hence the um, distance is a bit bigger, I will now choose for example 30 frames in my timeline and like before just click and move your uh, crosshairs effect to anywhere you want. Okay, also create one for scale and then again the same steps like um, 10 frames forward, scale it down to 75%, then stay there for one second when it's again a scale uh, keyframe, then 10 frames forward again and back to 100. So it's really always about the same uh, pattern right here. Once you found your perfect timing and your locations, it's really about finding the perfect speed. And then it's always yeah, really about uh, copying or doing the same steps over and over again. So let's say I only want um, two movements before I reach my destiny. So of course you can um, really do that forever, like look here, look here, look in South America, look in South Africa, Australia, really move your crosshairs around, but as I always say, to save some time I will only now do two movements, then again 20 seconds forward and now move it somewhere um, around Europe, so maybe just in the heart of France, in the heart of Germany, okay, and then once again 10 frames forward scale it down to 75. But this time I will stay there because now I want to animate or I want to make a transition from this world map to the next closer one. But before we do that let's click on our crosshairs layer and hit Ctrl D or go to edit and duplicate and then just click and drag this crosshairs number two on top of your second image because later on we want to use 
the same um, pattern as before only for your second image. Okay, so let's say you want to stay there for about one second. So let's move again forward for one second. Okay. And then I also want one second as transition. So once again, one second forward in your timeline. Then I want to trim down my um, two layers to, to stay organized. But before I also trim down my um, second uh, image layer, I will first select my number one image and my number one crosshairs effect and go to composition or sorry, layer and recompose. And um, let's move that in the center right now and call it, let's call it world map number one, for example. Click OK. And again, trim it down to the specific length you want. And then I want to apply an effect which is called Block Dissolve. I like this effect because it gives this kind of pixel look to our um, transition. So as I said, just type in block, or block Dissolve or just block in your Effects and Presets panel. And just click and apply this effect on top of our world map composition. Okay. As I said before, I want to use one second as transition time, so I will go back for one second. Okay, and then I will click on transition completion because it starts at zero. And if I now go forward for one second again, this is our end position and now let's bring it up to 100. Um, to just play around with these values, I would recommend to just go in the middle section where we have the most amount of pixels. And as you can see, we have many, many small pixels. Of course, now they are set to 1, which is, in my opinion, way too small. So let's bring the values up to somewhere around, let's say, 15, for example. And also uncheck the soft edges because I really want that super pixel uh, look right here. Of course, if you want, you can also use uh, bigger um, bigger pixels or smaller pixels. I usually like to have smaller pixels because, as I said, they look a bit more detailed. Okay, and now if we move forward in our timeline, we can see that our image is now visible and eventually it, it transitions into our second image. And yeah, I think that really looks kind of great and fits to this overall um, animation style of this satellite zoom effect. Okay, so after that it's really now time to reset our crosshair. So let's go to the end of our animation right here. Hit U to open up the settings and also delete all of your keyframes. Let's bring the scale up to 100. And if your crosshairs is somewhere in the corners, just right click, choose transform and then go to center in view. And now it's, uh, yeah, as in the beginning, perfectly centered and scaled up to 100. So after the transition is finished, it's now time to, yeah, to kind of recreate the same pattern as before. So let's also click on those keyframes. Let's move forward for about um, 20 seconds bring it, I don't know, maybe somewhere around um, Norway or Sweden or so. And yeah, just repeat those steps over and over again. Okay guys, at this point I think I will now stop explaining you how to do the transition and the movement because it's always the same and it will be boring to make the same uh, things for two more layers. Of course, if you want, you can even create more layers, like 10 or so, so always zoom in a bit closer until you really can can look um, in, your, in your house or at your roof of your house, I don't know. So, like I said, it's always the same things, position and scale for crosshairs, and then select your layer and your crosshairs, pre combat make a transition to the next um, crosshairs with layer, and finally you can reach your goal. And as you saw in the preview, you can then write again some text like location found and whatever. So what I will now show you is uh, the final thing and that's about how to create um, the color correction to give the nice bluish, uh, coldish modern look. Therefore, I will now create an adjustment layer. So right click, new adjustment layer. Let's call it, for example, CC for color correction. 
And now after that I want to apply an effect which is called Tritone. Okay. By default the midtones are set to a bluish color, but I will change that to some... Sorry, I said uh, bluish, it's brownish. But I will change the color to some bluish tone. So meh, maybe something something like that maybe. Okay, and then you can also play around with blend with original. So at 100 you can see that your image is now um, yeah, set back to default. And obviously at 50% it's halfway blue and halfway original. So therefore, just to make sure your image is desaturated, I will apply an effect which is called hue and saturation. But uh, instead of dragging it below our tritone, I will drag it on top of our tritone. Sorry, let's change the position. Because I want the hue saturation effect first and finally our tritone. So just bring the saturation all the way down to minus 100. And then you can again play around with the settings, so make it very blue or black and white. So in my case I think something around, let's say 25 looks good. Of course you can even play around with the blue and the colors. You can also make it green or whatever color you want. And finally I want to apply an effect which is called uh, glow. Okay, so just apply an effect called glow and play around with the intensity and the radius, so maybe increase the radius, bring up the threshold to something around 85. Okay, so here's the before and after. Let's also bring down the intensity to comma 75 for example. Okay guys, I think now we are finished. Uh, this tutorial was actually a bit quicker than I thought, but as I said, I think it would be boring to always show the same steps over and over again. So once you understand how to make the transition and the animation for one layer, you can use the same principles for layer number 2, 3, 4 and so on. Okay guys, that's it for today. Now you know how to track your neighbor, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. So anywhere they go, you will always know what they do. So yeah, if you find that helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my uh, channel and also please check out my other social media sites like Instagram, Facebook and all that stuff. And yeah, like always, stay creative, have fun.